So this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is 56 stores are leaving New York after migrant raids. Uh, this is coming from the channel NYC Uncovered. And if you would like to see more of that type of content, guys, make sure you check out the link in the description. All right, check them out. Let's go and jump into it, guys. The rise in retail crime is forcing all the stores in New York City to pack up and flee the city. Well, it is happening more and more shoplifters brazenly stealing from supermarkets across the city. Francisco Walgreens announced it is closing five more stores amid high retail theft in the city. Throughout the pandemic, there has been a surge in theft and brazen shoplifting attempts, causing major concerns for retailers. Retailers and industry groups have been vocal about the rise in shoplifting and organized retail crime, with incidents of smashing windows and grabbing merchandise off shelves. Lawmakers have been urged to take action, but no significant progress has been made. Guys, the only progress that's going to be made is when all of these brick and mortar locations stop and you have to basically buy everything online, walk into the store with a, a QR code, they scan it and bring you your item. Then it'll stop. In response to the escalating theft issues, retailers have taken measures such as locking up products like deodorant and toothpaste, increasing that's security crazy. personnel and closing down stores. Welcome back to the Big Weekend Show. Shopping under lock and key may be the new reality as thieves get away with stealing goods over and over again from stores like CVS. Though the items locked up look strange, but it's items customers pick up daily, likewise okay. shoplifters. However, Walgreens reported a 50% increase in shrinkage due to organized... Bro, the fact that they're sitting However, here and just recording someone fill up their bags is absolutely wild to me, bro. All right. Walgreens reported a 50% increase in shrinkage due to organized retail crime, leading to the closure of several locations in San Francisco. Now, Walgreens saying it's closing more than 20 stores, five in San Francisco, because of this rampant problem, what's being called organized retail crime. In the right. city, there have been a total of 26 to 385 complaints regarding shoplifting and retail theft. Mm -hmm. This number is higher compared to the 20,024 complaints reported last year. Theft has always been a challenge for retailers, especially during economic downturns when people resort to petty crimes out of desperation. Factors like understaffed stores and self-checkout systems have made it easier for thieves to steal, contributing to the $94.5 billion in shrinkage costs reported by the National Retail Federation in 2021. This is where it gets worse. The manager of Walgreens expressed concern about the issue of shoplifting. According to the manager, Shoplifting not only affects their business, but also takes away tax dollars. Each stolen item represents a lost tax dollar. Although some stores have security guards, employees are instructed yeah, not, not to confront nothing. shoplifters, and shoplifters know this. Framing it is very exciting. Here's a quote to a local news. Keep this in mind, guys. It's in certain places. It's not everywhere, right? But um, in the in in New York, in California. Yeah, specifically these two places, bro. Yeah, just walk in there and take whatever you want, apparently, bro. Who's affiliate? If a security guard touches a shoplifter or forcefully collects the items it's held like by the assault, shoplifters, right? he is bound to lose his job. So oh. he just stands there and right. watches the shoplifter glide away with their loot. So you might as well save money by not hiring a security guard then. And in the worst case scenario, if he tries to stop them, the shoplifter might get violent and stab the employee. Oh, that escalates. But more stores are still shutting down. Way too fast. New this morning, some more bad news for Rite Aid. The pharmacy chain says it plans to close up to 500 stores as part of its bankruptcy plan. In the heart of the bustling NYC, Rite Aid stores have been plagued by a relentless wave of theft. One particular store, nestled at the intersection of 8th Avenue and 50th Street in Hell's Kitchen, fell victim to the audacity of thieves losing a staggering sum of over $200,000 worth of stolen goods within a mere span of two months. The repercussions were severe, leading to the store's closure in February. This was not an isolated incident. Right, Aid Guys, this is how you turn your neighborhoods into uh, deserts. This is exactly what you do here. Like, if you go into these local, to your local stores, okay, and pilfer from these local stores enough, all of the stores leave, and now you have to drive 15 minutes for milk, okay? Right, this is not intelligent, but I guess, you know, people are just trying to do whatever they need to do to survive, bro, but that is not a, there has to be another way, bro, all right? Aid as a whole bears the weight of $5 million in losses solely from theft. 
While the company initially attributed the closure of the aforementioned store to a strategic move aimed at shutting down underperforming locations, the employees painted a different story. The employee revealed that shoplifters, emboldened by their illicit desires, would brazenly enter the premises day after day, sometimes even returning for a second round to steal. Oh, they come crazy. with laundry bags, and they... This man rode his bike into, into the Walgreens. Filled up a black bag. And the security is just looking at him, bro. They shamelessly seize whatever their hearts desire, leaving the store shelves barren and its employees That's disheartened. Crazy. The employees felt helpless and couldn't stop them. And this is why the store is closing. They can't afford to stay open anymore. Right. However, store owners have pointed fingers at bail reform plans, claiming that they have played a role in exacerbating the issue. Absolutely. Joining us this morning, John Dirty uh, Aaron, president of Alliance Retail Services. He works with over 100 supermarkets in the city. John, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. A staggering 327 individuals were responsible for almost one-third of all shoplifting arrests in New York City last year. These repeat offenders were arrested and released on bail over 6,000 times. Among these so, individuals, 6, some resort to shoplifting as a means of trade, bro. while others are compelled by addiction or mental illness. In New York, some of the most active shoplifters include Isaac Rodriguez from Queens, also known as the Man of Steel because of his extensive criminal history, and Jamel Pringle, who has been arrested over 160 times. Criminal justice reform supporters argue that petty theft is often driven by necessity, with struggling New Yorkers resorting to stealing to make ends meet in a city known for its high cost of living. Don't you think it's time to leave New York? I was born in New York, guys, right? Um, and um, my, uh, my parents moved us out uh, when I was 12, I think 12, 11 or so, right? Um, listen, New York is excessively expensive, excessively. And if you are someone who's struggling in New York, you would probably be, be middle class to upper middle class in many other places around the United States of America. Maybe it's just time to leave, bro. However, on the other hand, law enforcement and industry organizations point to the rise of organized shoplifting groups, mm -hmm. habitual offenders, and the recent changes in bail laws as factors that allow these criminals to escape incarceration. Employees have reported catching individuals who try to walk out of the store with items hidden in their coats, sweaters, or even down their pants. They take immediate action by kicking them out, but to their surprise, some of them return later. In other cases, they are unaware of how the shoplifters manage to escape until they review the surveillance footage. However, businesses have resorted to locking up their merchandise behind glass, which can be frustrating for shoppers. They have also hired security guards to monitor the entrances. It is. Chains. Guys, guys, really quickly, it is incredibly frustrating. Um, I'm someone who, who generally shops a lot, of, a lot of the times at Best Buy because it takes a lot of equipment to run multiple channels. Really, you know, understand that. And it's frustrating to walk into a Best Buy currently and then to realize that there's nothing that I can even touch. Okay? Incredibly frustrating. I get that. Trust me. I understand that fully. Um... But I would rather do that than have the store leave completely, okay? Chains that went from padlock to padlock on both sides of the doors, and this was bizarre, something I'd never seen before. This Unfortunately, these security measures can be too expensive for small stores, and imagine. even reporting a small theft can be a hassle. As a result, these businesses are often left to deal with thefts on their own. Wow. In January, the Fordham Road Business Improvement District in the Bronx initiated a pilot program to enhance security for over 300 businesses. As part of this program, security guards are now on patrol during the busiest shopping hours. This is where it gets better. In 2023, Mayor Eric Adams of New York City unveiled a comprehensive strategy aimed at addressing the issue of retail theft throughout the city's five boroughs. The strategy encompasses specific measures to tackle retail theft committed by both individual shoplifters and organized crime groups. It involves a multifaceted approach that includes bolstering law enforcement initiatives, implementing improved social services, and providing additional resources to prevent shoplifting. These efforts Not enough. are particularly focused on individuals who are grappling with substance use disorders, serious mental illness, homelessness, or poverty. 
The shoplifting was reduced in 2023 due to this policy. But Mayor Adams was accused that the policy was so harsh, and unfortunately, it stopped. In 2024, shoplifting skyrocketed. Today, CVS announcing it is closing 900 of its more than 10,000 stores. And guys, keep in mind, as things and just overall products start getting more expensive and services, um, this is what's happening. People are trying to maintain a lifestyle that they could barely have, that they could have barely afforded two, three years ago before inflation just went absolutely nuts, right? They could not afford it then. And now they're trying to maintain it now, realizing they can't afford it. So they're walking into these stores and just taking things. Um, and then they're getting arrested and then being released. Basically, basically catch and release on criminals, bro. This is not an acceptable practice. If you walk into a store and you take something, you should go to jail, okay? CVS Pharmacy has been bracing for closures with several already announced in 2021. Three years ago, the company unveiled a plan to shut down 900 locations. And as of 2023, 300 closures were still under consideration. In early 2024, CVS declared its intention to close the remaining 300 stores by April. Adding to the list of closures is a store in Yorkville, New York, causing an uproar among residents. They're just clearing the shelves at a CVS in Bethesda. Yeah, you and I both shared this last yeah. night and we were talking about it then. People stood by and watched as that masked man yeah. scooped up products and put them in a bag. Located near 1241 Lexington Ave, close to East 84th Street, the store's final day of operation is set for May 16th. This closure comes after two others in the same area in January 2024 and September 2023. Spokesperson Amy Thibault provided the media with nearly identical statements for all three closures. He described the decision to close as a difficult one, mentioning that around 60 locations are still open in the vicinity. However, T-Bolt provided several reasons for the decision, including local market dynamics, population shifts, store density within the community, and the need to ensure adequate geographic access points for the community. CVS, like many other retailers, is closing locations and implementing safety measures due to increasing crime rates. Right. This particular CVS in Yorkville experienced a shocking incident in November 2023. But you know, you know how expensive that glass is to replace? Where a man used a hammer to break the store's window and injured another person. Despite the crime, residents are upset about the closure as they heavily relied on this CVS for their daily needs and medications. Oh, well. If shoppers do not choose a different location, Bro. their medications will be transferred to the CVS on Lexington Avenue at East 87th Street. 15 minutes away. Many people are concerned that more closures will follow, impacting their access to much-needed pharmacies. Some users are worried that CVS and Park Slope might be next. Every time they go there, there's always someone shoplifting and their inventory keeps shrinking. It's not getting better. More stores are shutting down. Target has announced it's closing nine stores in four states due to retail crime. This includes three stores in the Bay Area. Target announced the closure of nine stores across four states, with one located in East Harlem, New York, and three in San Francisco. The decision was made due to concerns over theft and organized retail crime which have posed safety risks for both employees and customers. Despite investing in various strategies to combat theft, including increasing security personnel, utilizing third-party guard services, and implementing theft deterrent tools like locking up merchandise, Target ultimately decided to close these locations. The company emphasized the importance of maintaining a safe working and shopping environment for everyone to ensure the success of their stores within the communities they serve. The closure of these stores may only make up a small portion of Target's total number of stores across the country, but it carries a lot of weight. It highlights the major obstacles that retailers such as Target encounter when it comes to preventing theft in their stores while balancing the safety of their employees and shoppers and fulfilling their role in the community, especially for those in low-income and minority communities who depend on these stores for essential items. In a shocking turn of events, the iconic Westfield Mall on Market Saint has just announced its impending closure this year. This decision comes as a result of a multitude of factors, such as dwindling sales, decreasing foot traffic, and a surge in crime rates in the vicinity. Right. We're talking about the Fulton Center in Lower Manhattan. There's a mall inside. The operator says crime has gotten so bad there, 
They are breaking the lease and closing down shops. Located in the heart of the financial district, Westfield Mall stands as a prominent commercial hub in San Francisco, boasting nine stories and more than 170 stores and restaurants, as reported by Westfield. Throughout the pandemic, there has been a consistent drop in sales and foot traffic, plummeting from 9.7 million visits in 2019 to 5.6 million in 2022. The retail operator Westfield has declared its intention to terminate its lease and sever all ties with the Fulton Center in Lower Manhattan. This decision, outlined in a solemn legal filing, speaks volumes about the dire circumstances. Westfield has revealed that businesses are hesitant to open and operate in the area due to the high risk of theft, property damage, bodily harm, and threats that their employees and customers may face. The prestigious Nordstrom store, along with other popular stores such as Banana Republic, decided to leave Westfield in May. This sudden departure has left the mall with a staggering 45% vacancy rate. This is yeah, where it gets empty, interesting. No doubt. A $45 million program to prevent shoplifting and save stores in New York City from closing has been unveiled by Governor Kathy Hochul. At Fox 5's Kendall Green has more on the $45 million plan that the governor hopes will make store owners and shoppers safer. The announcement was made by Gov Hochul on Wednesday morning in Lower Manhattan as a proactive step to combat the audacious and self-serving surge in retail theft that emerged during the pandemic. The comprehensive plan includes several important tactics, including the creation of a special task force to combat smash-and-grab incidents, criminal penalties for those who resell stolen goods online, and yeah, tax credits you know? for small businesses to improve their security measures. All of okay. these steps are intended to make retail environments safer and shield companies from the negative impacts of retail crime. All right, guys, here's the thing. So obviously there are a couple of factors uh, to this very specific issue here. Um, the micro crisis. So there are a couple of factors to this issue here. So obviously you have the migrant crisis that are, you know, unfortunately putting a lot of brand new people that are definitely going to be impoverished into this area um, that may have the ability to kind of join some type of street fraternity or gang, right? Uh, and then come together and start doing all types of retail theft, right? Then you have the people that are living in New York also who are incredibly poor uh, and they're doing the same exact thing, right? So that's just exacerbating the issue. Um, a lot of these stores are also closing, at least my opinion, um, because of these uh, the minimum wage hikes. Also, um, like I understand, everyone wanted to uh, you know make sure that the minimum wage was actually brought up to like a livable standard. But the problem with said livable standard is by doing this to some companies, right? Uh, these companies cannot actually afford to uh, even maintain the employees. So now you have a whole lot of brand new unemployed people, bro. Right? Uh, hence the reason why there's so many of these uh, these self-checkouts basically everywhere you go, guys. It's cheaper to have those machines than to even pay a person minimum wage, guys. Um, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. And if you guys would like to see more of this type of content, make sure you guys go ahead and check out uh, NYC Uncovered. All right? Catch you guys later. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.